I'm going to compare American Society of Magical Negroes to The Blackening and American Fiction. If you haven't seen those two movies, I'm not going to spoil the plot and what happens in those movies. I'm just going to talk about choices that those two movies made that American Society did not to its own detriment. These are three movies that came out in the last year that all explore what stories are told about Black people and how Black people are featured in stories. So you have The Blackening, which came out first, that explores the Black character always dies in horror movies trope. It is the closest one to American society in terms of exploring a trope. American fiction talks about representation of Black people in stories, and its target is two audiences, publishing and Hollywood. So let's start there. The Blackening and American fiction picked a lane. They picked the lane and they stayed in it. So we had stories about Black people in American fiction, and The Blackening gave us a horror movie. American society gives us the magical Negro trope, but also biracial angst and also black people's place in society and how we move in society and police, police brutality and women's issues and a whole bunch of stuff that detracts from the point of the movie. The, the writer's talking about assimilation, all of this, mul this multi-pronged approach that simply does not work in the movie. Second thing is both American fiction and the blackening give their main black characters relationships, depth, they're not, I said in my non-spoiler review, floating leaves that are unanchored by anything. They're, they're more than the issue that the movie is exploring. So in American fiction, he has a full family. There are a lot of B stories, you know, B and C stories in the movie that serve to enrich Mark as a main character so that I can keep caring about him over the course of the movie. The Blackening has a whole group of friends and there are multiple relationships within the friendship group and multiple dynamics and they have a history and they talk about their past. Aaron in American society is completely unmoored, unanchored. He doesn't have friends. His mother is mentioned one time. There's no, he's not friends with black artists. He's not in a group of black artists considering the artist space is so white. Nothing going on for him. Considering American society is about primarily, we think, a trope that uses black characters as a tool, them using him as a tool and not fleshing him out beyond his issues is pretty ironic. And then both American fiction and the blackening introduce the purpose of the movie in a way that assumed some knowledge on the audience's part. I'm going to say that the blackening in American fiction had a for us, by us feel that American society did not. We have David Allen Greer. I just refuse to learn that man's character's name, but we had his character explaining to Aaron how he's moving as a black man, like just pointing stuff out to him. Like, you know, why do you, have you ever thought about why you move out of their way? Have you ever thought about why you say sorry so much? So like he's walking Aaron through the dynamics of black people, him specifically, but also black people in general with white people. And it makes me wonder who is Aaron a stand-in for in this movie? Is he a stand-in for white people? Is he a stand-in for biracial black white people who have identity crises who is he a stand-in for it others him effectively others him and i know that um the writer wanted to explore biracial dynamics but that it, it doesn't work that's an extra issue that just doesn't work in this movie he should have picked a lane it could have been biracial issues you know in a racialized society and just gone with that. Related to how American society explains what it is about, American fiction and the blackening did not give the white audience an out. And having seen American society, I'm so thankful for that. And I didn't even realize they weren't doing that. What I mean is both of these movies are lambasting, you know, the white establishment, okay? Not individual white people, but the white establishment. And the fact of the matter is, what individual white people do benefit from the white establishment. Even if that benefit looks like just not critiquing these images that they see of black people in particular, right? So, you know, you have these, you have the publishing industry in Hollywood who's gatekeeping and is not opening the gate to diverse stories of black people. They are pushing their favorite types of stories 
are ones in which we're suffering, we're slaves, we're, you know, shuckling and jiving, whatever. And so then American fiction posits, correct me if I'm wrong, but every white person in American fiction is an antagonist. Even the one lady or two people on the panel who questioned the book, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Every white person is an antagonist. They could have made Monk's agent a white man, but they didn't. They made him a brown-skinned Latino. And I think he even talks about um, some of the stuff he faces as a, as a Latino. I could be making that up, but I appreciate that choice and didn't even realize that that was a choice. And I don't even know how intentional they were about that. Court Jefferson was about that. But I greatly appreciate that choice after watching American Society. Similarly, in The Blackening, every white person is an antagonist because you are critiquing the group of people who benefit from this trope to the detriment of the black character when this trope is used. Even the white cop who ends up, I believe sincerely, like wanting to help them at the end, at the beginning, he makes them uncomfortable. There's a power dynamic there that makes the characters uncomfortable. Contrast with American society that I believe the reason why Lizzie is so white presenting, why they chose someone like that was to give white people in the audience some comfort because she was the one who got it. She got it. She understood. She was an ally. She understood where he was coming from. And they don't emphasize the fact that she is more than white. She's also Asian. They don't specifically say that. They give one instance where they call this ignorant man calls her ethnic. I believe they chose someone who looked like that to 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 come to give anyone in the any white person in the audience who may need it some comfort about what was being said about white people. Lastly, American fiction and the blackening have foils to the trope, the stereotype, right? In American fiction, that foil is Monk. Even as he is having the journey he's having and being pulled into the trope of like telling like stereotypical stories about black people, he is questioning it every step of the way and saying, we are more than this and blah, 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 blah. He has a full-on conversation with Issa Rae's character. In The Blackening, all of the black characters are foils to the black character dies first in terms of the fact that they spend the movie trying to survive. In American society, there is no foil. There is no person who is an antagonist to that trope. Every black person in this movie agrees that the best way to live as a black person is to serve white people and we have to wait until Aaron has his revelation for us to get someone who semi gets it but then you know there's the whole part where like he goes into the bosom of a white coated woman all that so these are things I realized these are comparisons I made after seeing this movie and why I appreciate American fiction and the blackening the way they both chose to go about things the blackening is goaded forever. I am so excited for the blackening too.